the beginning that you have made me. I would like to to add that I'm not a pianist. So I grew up in Tel Aviv. I was born in '58, and that was the time when to be an Israeli was, in a way, very uh, remote from my Jewish origins, so to speak. Very Israeli, in a way. My name is Itai. And that's a bit funny, I know, but it's biblical, it's a biblical name, there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, but also the name of my profession is rather funny, say a conductor. The word for a conductor in Hebrew is actually the same word as a winner. So you have an orchestra with one winner and many losers actually playing the music. In English it's interesting, conducting, it's all about, so it seems, connectivity being able to connect people in some way, to become a conductor. My interest in, in, in leadership, in speaking about leadership, in, 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 in um, the, the change I've made in my career, uh, so to speak, to conduct less and deal more with music as a metaphor, maybe is a way to uh, uh, initiate some change. There are two basic perspectives which come into play. First uh, one has to do with control, uh, and creativity and the relations between the two. And the second one has to do with the individualistic character of music as a performer, as a listener, and then the community. Look at Leonard Bernstein. You must know the name Bernstein and, and, and what he did. Look at a very short clip from Bernstein. See what, you, what happens there. When you look at him conducting, you can see how he has this, we can call it a memory of the future. He, like, he knows so well, not only as a vision, but actually a memory. This is there, and therefore you know how to get there. It, it's, it's so strong and it's so magnetic. Did you see the face? Did you see how many expressions this guy had? So when you, 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 you're, you're sitting in the orchestra playing violin and you're playing a, a, a painful sound. Painful, not because it's, it's out of place or out of tune, but because the meaning of it is painful. Yeah, you look at Bernstein, what do you see? The guy is suffering. Not in a way that you would like to stop. Yes, suffering as if uh, enjoying himself in a Jewish way. If you, if you understand. <laughs> yeah. happily, happily immersed in his own suffering. Yeah? Um, did you see the fact that the... Uh, uh, baton, uh, the stick was actually not used anymore. So it's not about authority. Something ha ha happens that comes instead of I'm going to tell you what to do. And that's a simple human dialogue between, between people. When I had uh, my Tel Aviv Symphony Orchestra here, it was uh, composed mainly by newcomers from the former Soviet Union. So one day I'm conducting my orchestra and, and something really doesn't work. We are, uh, we are going through a movement again and again. It, it doesn't get better, so I stop. And I speak to the orchestra and I say, guys, tell me, what is wrong? What is not working for you? Is the tempo wrong or should I do this or should I do that? And there was a complete silence. And after maybe three minutes, an older gentleman you know, stands up and with his broken Hebrew but very clearly says, where we come from, conductor doesn't ask the orchestra what to do. He knows what to do. And then sit down. I was trying to respect them by saying, we are partners. And they felt I was really insulting them because that really means they had to work for somebody who's not professional. Now, it takes a lot of time to persuade people to get into this kind of dialogue. I had the for good fortune to be uh, Lenny's uh, student and also his assistant. So I, I witnessed so many times where he would come in front of people and people would just say, OK, you're a great conductor, tell us what to do. He said, I cannot tell you what to do. You have to come with your all, all of you. 
personality and all, and tell me what you think about this part of Mahler. And once you start that, we're starting a dialogue, and, and this becomes a dialogue of all the people playing the music, and the interpretation is actually achieved through this dialogue. Uh, Leonard Bernstein always said that he basically wanted to be a rabbi. That was his ambition. And uh, a funny thing, when the Israel Philharmonic finally, after many years, gave him the title of the equivalent for a laureate conductor, he's called in Hebrew, Rav Menetzchim. Rav Menetzchim. So he said, finally, I'm a Rav. I want to always want to be a rabbi. And I got, th this is because he was so um, uh, involved with actually verbalizing, trying to explain to people about music and music. Um, um, and he saw that as a very Jewish thing. And I think it is. Um, and, and of course, when you have those old sacred texts, Jewish texts on one side, and then musical decks. You have Mozart and Bach, and, and for a musician they are as sacred as, you know. And, and I think if you look at the different ways of, of looking at traditions, you will find great similarities. Uh, it is my belief that you, real, you really cannot teach somebody something he doesn't know already in one way. Of course, it's a very Jewish thing. Uh, you think about uh, well, when the angel comes and hits the newborn on the head and then he forgets all the Torah and the, and the traditional ways of asking questions. Not only Jewish, I mean, when you say Jewish, you think about Socrates, it's the same thing. You're trying to bring the people to, uh, through dialogue. Can we have a little demonstration? Would you be my orchestra for a second? Can you sing, please, the first note of Don Giovanni? You have to sing, oh, and I'll stop you, okay? Ready? <laughs> well, come on, with me. If you do it without me, I feel even more redundant than I already feel. So, please, wait for the conductor. Now, look at me, uh, uh, and I stop you. Let's go. Ah. <laughs> so, we, we'll have a little chat later. I understood that something I really wanted to uh, uh, get rid of, which was to be authoritative, to tell people what to do. I don't like it. Um, so I understood either I have to change or I have to change my um, vocation. And I, I did partly both. <laughs> this is hardcore Florentine. The period that I played a lot, you know, performed with a million bands. I think the thing I love to do the most is to sit right here and to do whatever I feel like on the computer. I really cruise around the internet a lot, you know, searching for anything, any, anything creative. Then I express myself through the internet. the evolution of music and technology. 